Hello everyone. So today we will be discussing about the mock test that we have conducted on food allergens. Before that, I want to give you a small gist of what we will be offering in the mock test uh, that we are conducting for TNFSO exams. So first of all, this is the exam that is exclusively conducted for uh, students who are from Tamil Nadu and um, those who are preparing for TNFSO. For them, only this course is valid. And when you start preparing for an exam, you need to know the dates uh, for the exam so that you have a deadline to complete the syllabus and prepare well. So uh, official announcement for this exam uh, dates have not been done yet, uh, but it is said that between June first week, within two months, this exam dates will be officially announced. So that is the one of the reason why we are conducting a topic wise MCQ so that you have a better practice and hold over each, uh, each topic. So coming to the syllabus, you already know, you have already seen uh, the syllabus. Uh, here, if you can see, uh, I think all of you might have already gone through the syllabus. So here, um, this recruitment of food safety officer, each topic we will be conducting uh, the MCQs. So uh, in the morning, we will be releasing the MCQ, you can attend it. And uh, by the night or the next day, we will be releasing the video which explains you each question and answer along with some additional information related to it. So most of you have asked me uh, why we, um, you, know, you can you, why you are not conducting complete course uh, with the classes and materials. So uh, most of you have already attended Central Food Safety Officer exam and also uh, the technical officer exam and the syllabus is almost the same except few things uh, but more than 70 percent of you have already started with the preparation and have a small idea about uh, the whole syllabus so we, we don't want to waste time on uh, getting into depth of each topic because it will uh, take much more time uh, so here, if you are uh, preparing topic-wise with the uh, MCQ practice, it will give you a better hold on each topic and hence you'll be covering it within the two months and will be ready for uh, attending the exam in a better, uh, with a better confidence. So um, I guess all of you have seen the syllabus. So each day we'll be conducting one topic. And uh, if you see, there are topics which are uh, wide. So, uh, for example, here, if you consider this macromolecule and micro uh, micronutrients and all, so they are a bigger topic. So we'll be dividing it for the two days and will help you to cover it in a better way. So uh, if you want to enroll for the course, please do it within 20th of this month because uh, we are keeping it a very limit for very for a limited members because we uh, want to give the best materials for the students even if uh, 20 or 30 people enroll that is enough for us and we want we want to give attention to each student so that everyone who enrolls in the course is able to qualify in the exam and achieve what they wanted to. Uh, I, uh, we don't want to have a bigger class or uh, members so that we, we uh, our attention cannot be divided among a larger group. So the only limited seats we have is 30 members and already 20 members have already enrolled. So if you are really interested to take up the course, then please enroll it within uh, uh, within 20th of this month and only five more seats are left at an offer price that is 999 and if you uh, if you enroll it a bit later then your price will be around 1200 so make it fast and if you want to enroll and take the benefit of this course so today we will be learning about allergens 
before starting uh, the questions i want to give you the gist of what exactly is food allergens so basically food allergy is related to immune immunological response uh, so whenever we eat a food that we are allergic to then the immune system will immediately react to the that food and it will lead to production of different symptoms uh, which includes gastrointestinal symptoms cutaneous symptoms which is related to skin and respiratory symptoms and the most serious one is the anaphylaxis which is a, a most severe symptom that is caused uh, in case of food allergy so we have to be sure about each symptom or what are the uh, like for vomiting diarrhea constipation abdominal pain comes under gastrointestinal symptoms cutaneous symptom that is related to skin uh, leads to itching swelling respiratory system uh, symptoms is related to wheezing so these are some of the symptoms uh, that are that get manifested due to food allergy so basically the what happens is when you consume the food uh, which contains the food allergens so our immune system gets activated with the release of chemical called histamine so once the histamine is released this chemical triggers the allergic system allergic reaction and once this uh, allergic reaction is activated you will start uh, developing the symptoms in the body either uh, through skin rashes or some respiratory problems so basically the food allergens are proteins itself and the change in this protein structure will lead to uh, the loss of allergic potential so now let's uh, know about the causes of food allergy so new proteins that are introduced into foods during genetic manipulation can be one of the cause for food allergy environmental factors such as hygiene hypothesis so when your body is not exposed to a new proteins then it is there are chances that it can lead to food allergy and modification of food supply during production processing and preservation lifestyle and eating behaviors will influence uh the way your body uh is uh designed like as in how your immune system is developed with your lifestyle habits that will also influence the food allergy publicity of symptoms associated with food also is a factor uh, that uh, that contributes in the causes of food allergy so here are some food allergens uh that are commonly uh, said to cause the food allergy such as milk egg peanut and all so these uh, are some common allergen food there are also some other seeds pulses that causes food allergy in particular uh, percent of population so they are basically the sunflower seeds cotton seeds poppy seeds molasses that is a by product of sugarcane industry beans peas lentils tart uh, tartazine that is coloring substance for sulfite and latex so here sulfite uh, if it is used as 10 mg per kg of the product or more then it is considered to have the allergy uh, it is considered to have an allergy so um, the other is the refined peanut oil which is not allergic but when you consider this unrefined peanut oil then it has a allergic effect environmental agents also are considered to have food allergies like pollen mold spores dust and mites food additives also encourage the allergic reaction in children So when we consider the occurrence of common food allergies, peanut stands 
at the highest with a 25.2 percent so majority of the populations are exposed to the peanut allergy uh, whereas soya allergy is minimum so now let's understand the allergic mechanism in short so um, the person who has this genetic tendency to develop allergic disease is called atopy and a person who has this um, disorder or who is the affected individual with a sensitive immune system he is said to be atopic so what exactly happens is when you consume the food getting it will get sensitized with like the food allergens will combine with the b b cells and t cells and they start the production of antibodies that is ige production so this ig immunoglobin production which are the antibodies they are actually a uh, specific to specific food for example when you consume the milk the antibodies produced uh, when it considers it as an allergen is different than when you consume soya products or the peanut so once this is produced it will circulate in the blood these antibodies circulate in the blood and they combine with the wbc cells and the surface of this body cells is, which is called as mast cells so it will combine with the wbc and it will uh, stay on the surface of the body that is the mast cells so these mast cells since it's a, it is present on the surface of the body they are present all over the body so in if it is present uh, in the nose or throat it will start the itching of tongue or mouth and or in, it will um, lead to trouble in breathing or swallowing when this mast cells present in the gastrointestinal tract is activated then it will lead to diarrhea or the abdominal pain and in in case if it is on the skin then it it causes intensive stitch or uh, itching So one of the major severe and dangerous symptom or uh, the factor that uh, results from the food allergy is termed as anaphylaxis. So here there is, uh, this is considered to be dangerous because it can be fatal or this, um, this is very dangerous in terms of it develops number of symptoms within 5 to 15 minutes. It is rare and severe. and it is a dangerous form of allergic reaction so the first symptom is uh, leads to itching swollen tongue there is a wheezing and even the tightening of throat these are the initial symptom that develops and then it is followed by the chest pain there is a, uh, there is a sh sharp drop in the blood pressure when the bp gets low then definitely there is an irregular heartbeat and loss of consciousness so hence because of these many uh, symptoms that relates in this anaphylaxis uh, 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 condition or the it is also termed as anaphylaxis shock so this is considered to be the most dangerous one so basically the symptoms uh, will take place within 5 to 15 minutes all of these factors will um, take place in the body and it is difficult to handle such allergic reactions there there need to be a medical supervision immediately when such symptoms develop in a person So now let's understand the difference between food intolerance and food allergy. So in case of food intolerance, the digestive system trouble is due to the breaking down of food. There are not enough enzymes or a particular enzyme that is required for breaking down the food that has been consumed consumed by the person. So that is why it is. Uh, the food intolerance, such as lactose intolerance or the gluten intolerance. whereas in case of food allergy as we know it is due to the immune system it is caused by the immune system over reaction to the certain food product that has been consumed so here in food intolerance the body tries to digest the food 
but it cannot because of the certain um, facilities are not provided inside the body. The required enzyme or the conditions is not met to digest the food. But in case of food allergy, the body mistakes a certain food as an invader. It, it uh, consider it as a foreign body and hence it starts uh, pro the production of the antibodies. And here in intolerance, there is no involvement of immune system. Whereas in food allergy, it triggers the allergic reaction with the release of chemical called histamine. And here the response is delayed few hours or a day in case of food intolerance because uh, after immediately after eating a food which is not digested by your body, you will not know. Only after a certain time, the stomach pain develops or there is an indigestion, vomiting. So such thing is the response is usually delayed. Whereas in case of food allergy, it's immediate within 30 minutes of food intake. So here, if you consume in, in, in food intolerance, if you consume even the small amounts, uh, it can be digested or it is eliminated by the body without even digestion. So here, uh, the small amounts is tolerable. There is no severe condition developed if you're consuming a little amount of uh, the food that you, your body is not ready to digest. But only if it is a large amount, then it will cause the symptoms. Here, in case of food allergy, even the small amounts can cause the allergic reaction. So, compared to food allergy, uh, the food intolerance is much more difficult to di get diagnosed. Whereas, in case of food allergy, there are some um, the allergy tests that can be used to analyze which particular food is causing the allergy. So this gives you clarity about what is food intolerance and what is food allergy. So uh, this is explained because sometimes a very basic question comes up in the exam and uh, these options will be given uh, in the in the these options will be given in the exam and you need to know the minute differences between such things. Even you need to know what is food infection, food intolerance, food intoxication, food allergy. So there are a minute difference between these terms and usually there are basic questions which usually comes up in the examination. Uh, and this uh, that, that is the reason why we get confused in the options during examination. So here it's a clinical manifestation of allergy. So here when you consider oral allergy syndrome, then it is uh, characterized by local tissue reaction on the lips, in the mouth and the throat. If it's an exercise induced anaphylaxis, then it is characterized by flushing. There's a shortness of breath, fainting can occur. Uh, and this can occur up to 24 hours after ingestion of the offending food. As I said, uh, the anaphylactic shock is the most serious manifestation of all the food allergic reactions. It involves gastrointestinal tract, skin, respiratory tract, and cardiovascular system. So in this, there is all the symptoms is involved in anaphylactic shock. So symptoms is combination and it is developed very rapidly. Even death can occur from the cardiovascular or the respirate, respiratory collapse within minutes of ingestion of the offending food. So here, all, although any food can trigger the anaphylaxis, the peanuts, tree nuts, selfish milk, eggs, and fish, they are the most common food that can result in anaphylactic shock. So this is the clinical manifestation of allergy. So you should be knowing which symptom is related to which, uh, um, uh, which symptom is related to which system. So here the uh, Oral allergy syndrome is different. If it is exercise induced anaphylaxis is different. If the symptom is developing on the skin, there is a different that is itching and swelling will take place. If it's a respiratory uh, syst uh, symptoms, then it will lead to wheezing and breathing problems. So you should be knowing what exactly happens in each symptom that is developed due to food allergy.
So here is a table which you can go through uh, later. Where, where anyway, we are providing you the recording, and even I'll tell you what are the materials that we have referred to make the mock test, and that you can go through once. So here, uh, each system and what is the um, resulting symptom that each system and what is the resulting sim symptom that is developed in the particular system has been given. So you can go through it later. So there are some methods uh, through which we can diagnose food allergies. One is the RAST test. So it is something related to blood. So they take the blood test and they will find out the IgE presence that is antibiotic pre uh, present in the uh, blood. One more is a SAIC test, which is a comprehensive test, uh, which is which also helps to know the allergic reaction. Uh, it is the only food allergy test that has achieved 80% success in diagnosing the food allergies. The other tests include the blind or the double blind studies. So basically this double blind study is considered to be the most um, accurate uh, test that has been uh, given uh, suggested by the doctors. So here what they do is they uh, take the sample or the food that causes the food allergy along with the one that is doesn't cause any allergy to that person. So they will completely do the two layer and give it as a capsule. Once the person consumes that capsule, if there is a reaction that takes place, then they will make out that particular uh, a component is allergic to this particular person. So this this is influ this is not uh, this is considered the best test because it is not influenced or it is not uh, influenced by the person's assumptions. So he cannot assume okay I had eaten this because of that I have got uh, this allergy. So such assumptions are eliminated in this double blind study. So that is one of the reasons why doctor uh, considers this test as one of the best tests. So one of the best treatments is the conventional treatment which blocks the immune response with the steroids, both systemic and topical, but the steroid consumption is always said to harm the body. So this was the earlier conventional method so here anaphylactic reaction if it happens it is because of if you're in uh, this it is a natural occurring adrenaline uh, which is injected directly to the th thigh muscle or the vein usually with vitamin c uh, which is an anti-allergy vitamin it is used to stabilize the mast cells uh, which release the histamine and al other allergy mediating chemicals So there are different milk allergies also, which is cow's milk allergy, which is characterized by different uh, symptoms. And there is a peanut allergy, soya bean allergy. So these all uh, things, the, the source and reference will be providing. So let's move on to the discussion of the mock test. So I'll provide you the reference and notes. You have to go through it in order to understand it in it in a depth. So I have just give you the gist of this uh, whole uh, food allergies and you have to study uh, these different allergies. See food allergy, what are the symptoms? There are different uh, whole foods. Uh, this food allergy labeling and consumer protection act is there. So you have to uh, understand this. Uh, food ingredients which are uh, even derived from the major food allergens can also be uh, allergic to people. So here there are exam uh, examples, cross contact. What are the remedies that we use? Uh, so here one of the important thing is hypoallergic food that has been manufactured, which reduces this allergic components in the food with the enzymatic methods and genetic manipulation. So other thing is processing of food during which the allergies uh, allergens are removed 
and manufacturing of functional food with immunosuppressive activities are one of few remedies uh, that are employed in order to reduce the uh, in order to reduce the allergens so now let's uh, study uh, each question well we will solve this so the food allergens are almost always dash in nature. Now you know that food allergens are proteins in nature. So the answer B is the right answer. So the next question is response due to food allergies related with definitely the immune system. So once the immune system gets activated, other system uh, develops the symptoms of uh, as a reaction to this food allergy. So the right answer is immune system. The next question, DASH is a powerful chemical that can cause a reaction in respiratory system, gastrointestinal tract, skin, or the cardiovascular system. Here also you know the chemical which is responsible uh, for the number of symptoms or the reaction development after the food allergy is nothing but the histamine. So the next question is, which of the following is not true in terms of handling allergens? So here, the first statement, let's see. Store allergic ingredients or products separately to prevent, minimize cross-contamination, which is true because it is necessary to store the ingredients that are allergic to humans, humans uh, to keep it in a separately so that it will definitely help to minimize the cross contamination so option a is true second option declare allergens on labels for all the products including rework and intermediate products that is also true because based on the labeling only a few people can avoid uh, consumption of these allergens so that uh, they don't result in severe symptoms the third option is avoid using dedicated pallets or bins so here this statement is false because we need to use these desiccated pallets and bins in order to keep them separately and prevent the cross contamination so here this statement is false the fourth statement if possible have the de dedicated processing equipment and containers to prevent the allergen cross contact so this is employed in the industry where uh, there is multiple you know, products being processed and usually we can see in the packets where they have written that the product doesn't contain any allergens but they are manufactured in the um, in the area where even the peanuts or the soya has been processed so such labeling also you can find on the packets so here uh, different dedicated processing equipment and containers they are need to be um, employed in uh, in order to avoid this allergen so the false treatment is avoid using desiccated pallets or bins so next one sulfite as i said sulfite in concentration of dash is considered as allergen the option a is the right one that is 10 mg per kg or more is considered to be an allergen so which of the following is not a cutaneous symptom during food allergy response? So here cutaneous means something that is related to skin. So here wheezing is not related to skin. It is related to respiratory system. So the right answer here is wheezing. So the next statement, whether the given statements are true or false statement, so the statement one says that food protein fragments responsible for allergic reaction can be broken down by cooking or stomach enzymes. The statement two says infants and children are more prone towards food allergens. Mm -hmm. So here the right state or uh, the, the second mm -hmm. statement is true. They are more prone towards the food allergens. The first statement is false because any fruit, uh, food protein fragments which are responsible for this allergic reaction, they are not broken down by cooking or the stomach enzyme. That is the reasons why even from the processing uh, 
after the severe processing also they sustain in the food product and hence they are mentioned in the food products so they are not uh, destroyed during the processing or even from the stomach enzyme the most severe and dangerous form of allergic reaction as we discussed is the anaphylaxis and the most reliable test for identification for food allergy done by doctors is the double blind food challenge so rats test is, as i said it is the blood test dietary tract is nothing but keeping the record of what you eat daily and if there is some new uh, food that you introduce in your uh, in, in your diet and if you uh, after consumption of such diet or the food you feel uh, you develop food allergic reactions then it is easier to know which particular food is uh, causing you the reaction so that is why dietary tract is usually maintained by the parents for their kids and eliminate diet is nothing but uh, to avoid uh, the food products that you already know will cause reactions for you such as if you are allergic to milk products you will completely eliminate those uh, milk products in your diet and consume the alternative source for uh, for such products the next question allergic patients are described as we discussed it it is atopic person so uh, hypersomnia is something related to the person who has a disorder of uh, continuously excessive sleeping or uh, due even during the day hemophilia is related to the blood issues and uh, ectopic person is someone uh, which is related to disorder during pregnancy so dash is, has been recommended as a substitute for patients allergic to cow milk so it is the goat milk is used uh, as a substitute for the patients which are who are allergic to cow's milk due to the presence of lactose the next one is dash is naturally occurring protein in wheat uh, which can be used to improve the digestibility of wheat so the right answer is theoredoxin so other three globulin lutein and albumin these are the proteins that are responsible for causing food allergens in the uh, food uh, in they are present in the wheat and they are responsible for uh, causing the allergens uh, in the people who consume it so theoredoxin is the natural occurring protein which is which improves the digestibility of wheat hence uh, this is again initially added during the production of wheat uh, for those people who are allergic to uh, such components so what are the food allergies an immunologic reaction resulting from ingestion contact or inhalation of food or food additives an adverse reaction to food in which the body's immune system is not involved a metabolic food disorder where food borne substances interfere with normal metabolic process all of the above so here one of the thing if you usually here, when you are not performing in the exam your mind is com comparatively alert and you uh, try to answer it in a better way so in case if you are in an examination hall and there is a very basic question uh, but you are not able to figure out um, the answer you you can use the elimination method where you can you don't know the right answer but you know which uh, the which cannot be the right answer right so here if you think here they have you know food allergy is related to immune system so here they have said that immune system is not involved so definitely the option b is eliminated then once option b is eliminated all of the above is also eliminated so answer should be between a and c so is c is something that is related to metabolic food disorder food borne substance so definitely food allergy is not something related to food burn or food disorder which is related to metabolic process so here you it's a clear shot that an immunoglo it is the right answer is it's an immunologic reaction which results from the ingestion contact or inhalation of food or food additive so elimination method you can employ uh first few questions uh because you should you need to be aware of even the negative marking in the examination so the next question is what are the 
probable causes of food allergy that we have discussed all the three factors that is new protein introduction environmental factors life lifestyle and eating behavior all are responsible for the causes of food allergy so anaphylactic shock as we told as i told you it is uh, characterized by the gastrointestinal tract skin respiratory tract and the cardiovascular system all the, of them uh, is in, involved in this anaphylactic shock so the other one this local tissue reaction in lips in the mouth and throat as i told it is the oral syndrome so it is not the anaphylactic shock uh, so the next question which food has the highest occurrence in the world uh, food allergen is the peanut uh, we had so uh, we, ha uh, we had seen the occurrence of the allergies uh, is highest in case of peanut and lowest in case of soya bean which diagnostic test is used for immediate ige food uh, allergy so as i told you rast test is the the right answer which involves the blood test and it identifies the ige food uh, ig that antibiotics antibiotics that has been produced due to the consumption of the food containing the food allergens so here cma stands for cow's milk allergy the best uh, the best accepted treatment for food allergy reaction is use of hypoallergic foods strict avoidance of specific food or protein use of functional food with immunosuppressive activity all of the above so here they have asked the best accepted treatment so use of hypoallergic food and use of functional food with immunosuppressive activity is a preventive measure or the treatment it's not the treatment or it's a preventive measure that is used in order to provide food products that that help the food allergic people to consume the food uh, without getting any severe reaction but the best accepted treatment for food allergy reaction is complete avoiding the specific food or protein that causes you the allergies so the uh, the right answer is b so what can a food industry do to avoid food allergy so have a well documented allergy policy with strict adherence to labeling requirement operational strategies to eliminate cross contamination capacity building of employees with effective consumer communication so all the all the three are essential in order to avoid the food food allergy in the production area and the food industry so the right answer here is all of the above the next uh, question is latherism is due to the consumption of this we know that is it's from the kesri dal so kesri dal uh, causes this uh, the consumption of kesri dal causes latherism which allergen causes a reaction in sufferers of celiac disease so it is related to stomach usually and this is due to the consumption of gluten that is present in the wheat the the gluten is not digested uh, in the stomach and due to which there uh, you, uh, they will develop the indigestion issue and the stomach pain which of the following foods are people most allergic to so for this question also you can uh, use the elimination method so first thing is coffee you have seen here coffee you you have, might have not heard anyone uh, saying that they are allergic to coffee definitely you might have heard it's a heat so there are some you know uh, skin problems or the uh, pimples will will be developed due to more heat when you consumption coffee but it is not something related to allergic food so the option d is eliminated so coming to mango mango is not many people and potato is not something that people are allergic to so option b is also eliminated left are the two options dairy corn meat dairy nuts egg and fish so coming to corn is not something people are allergic to and even meat so even option a is eliminated so the right answer will be c dairy yes many people are allergic to milk nuts such as peanut uh so we are uh, even the soya chunks they are allergic 
eggs they are allergic to fish also because of uh, the um, components some uh, phytochemicals they are also allergic to fish so the right answer is c so the uh, the class of drugs used to treat allergic reaction is called antihistamines so histamines are the ones that cause the allergic reaction in the body when there is a consumption of food allergen so the drug class of drugs that are used to treat such allergic reaction is called as antihistamine so the next question is asthmatic symptoms such as bronchospasms or the wheezing occur with the exposure to this is due to the msg that is monosodium glutamate which is a flavor enhancer so uh, exposure to this uh, flavoring uh, flavor enhancer leads to the asthmatic symptoms not uh, from the other three options so uh, this is um, this ends uh, the discussion of the mock uh, taken on the food allergens so you can um, so if you are interested to enroll you can do it uh, soon uh, now uh, i'll uh, i'll tell you the sources uh, for this uh, mock test so you can study this pdf which is food allergy i'll share it in the telegram channel uh, so here they have given the introduction what are the food allergens allergic mechanism uh which i had shown in the ppt so you can just make a short note what is anaphylaxis even structure of allergens is explained uh here the as i told you the table can uh, can uh, clinical manifestation of allergy is shown and identification of food allergies testing of food allergies it covers major portion and gives it's a very short uh um information uh, but it is it gives a very good content treatment of food allergies so there are some questions also after which uh, and they are, they have given the keywords and also given some useful books that you can refer to if you want to study it in depth so this pdf i'll be sharing with you all uh, so one more um material you can refer to is this training manual for food safety supervisor course in this uh, if you find here uh, so adulterant if you find you can see here this one uh, there is one more source where you can see this adulterant and you have also uh food allergens if you type here you can see this you can study this completely and they have given uh what are the most hypersensitive ingredients also and here you can see uh sulfite in concentration of 10 mg or kg or more so uh this uh you can go through once there's only two paragraph and here here you can also see the handling allergens they have given so this you can go through it's just a, almost two paragraph so this pdf also i'll be sharing with you so here one more is the guidance document that is for food safety management systems even in this you can see the uh, adult trends food allergen so here um, so even in this document you can see the uh, the management adult trend management also here if you see this is allergen management so they have given or uh, about the control and management of allergens how it can be done in the industry level so this also you can go through so these are the offic official sources and one more pdf what i told you is on the uh, that pdf and for that pdf there is a ppt that also i'll be sharing with you so these are the four materials that we use for food allergies and this if you study this much it's enough for that topic and 
so this was the uh, explanation of the video so if you like it and if you need any improvement or if you need it in a particular way also you can tell us and so please tell us what uh, what exactly you're expecting from us so that we can develop and improvise and provide you with the better materials also so uh, as I told you earlier, if you want to enroll uh, for the students who are, uh, who are attending for the Tamil Nadu exam, uh, food safety officer exam, uh, please enroll with, uh, within 20th of this month in order to make sure you get through the seats for us because we have very limited seats so that is as I told you it is only 30 members we are allowing and if you want with the offer please enroll fast uh, with 25 members uh, only gets this offer and 20 members are already filled you have five seats uh, we have five seats uh, with offer and five more seats without offer only 30 members we will entertain and so that we can give attention to each person so yes, thank you for listening. See you in the next class.